I want to see some more cheap fragrance reviews. I need cheap fragrances. If it's not cheap, it's not for me. P.S. I hate you. This is the <laughs> worst channel of all time. Not Give again. Give me some good cheap fragrance recommendations. I want Bugatti no. levels of fragrance, but I want to can talk about indie moment. fragrance. How about no. discontinue? That costs nothing, but smells like no. something super expensive, <laughs> super cheap. That's all I care about. Super freaking cheap. Hey friends, Ashley with 10 cents, hope you're doing really well. Today, it's time to go over five cheap fragrances that smell like more expensive ones. So these fragrances here, you can pick them up from discounters for a really good price. Don't have to spend too much. And they're gonna have you smelling pretty similar to more expensive fragrances out there. Some of these are closer than others, and I'll let you know which ones are maybe not quite as close as we work through it. We've got a lot to talk about, let's jump into it. First off, guys, we're starting things off with Baccarat Rouge 540 from Maison Francis Kirchon. And there are countless fragrances at this point that smell similar to Baccarat Rouge 540. You can go on Fragrantica or you can even just search like Baccarat Rouge 540 alternatives on Google or YouTube or wherever. It's gonna pull up a whole bunch of stuff. But I'm gonna touch really quickly on two different fragrances that'll get you pretty close. First off, we've got this one from Christian Siriano, Ooh La Rouge. Check it out, it's a red bottle. A lot of these fragrance houses don't really try to hide it. When they're trying to get a Baccarat Rouge 540 vibe, they put it right into a red bottle. That way you know what they're doing. They're not hiding it, they want you to know. This one's got amberwood, praline, saffron, and musk as some of the notes in the fragrance. I actually find it a little bit weird to spray myself. Don't know if anybody else out there has that issue, but it just feels a little bit strange holding it like that. Now it's not a big issue. I mean, I can still spray it, obviously. My wife doesn't seem to think it's an issue at all, but for me, it's awkward. This one is very much geared toward women, but guys can still pull it off. Actually, in the box, when you buy this, there's like lip gloss. So yeah, it's for ladies, but unisex, pretty much. So this is 100% doing that Baccarat Rouge 540 thing where you've got precious woods in the base, you've got saffron and praline giving you a good amount of sweetness right off the top. It is actually pretty good. The quality is nice, much higher than you might expect actually because Christian Siriano fragrances originally were sold in Payless shoe stores. Yeah, I'm actually not making that up. That's, that's where they were originally carried. But that time has passed and now we have Oula Rouge, which is a very solid Baccarat Rouge 540 alternative. So if you're looking for one, you can check this one out, or you can check this one out from Banana Republic, Dark Cherry in Amber. And would you believe it, the bottle's red. This one's got cherry, praline, amber, and cherry blossom as some of the notes in the fragrance. So once again, fragrance using praline to get a little bit of that Baccarat Rouge 540 sweetness going on. Now, gotta tell you guys, this one, not my favorite. I think the opening is actually really nice, but once it dries down to me, it's not that good. I really like the opening. The dark cherry initially is rich. It's got a good amount of depth, a little bit dark, sweet, really nice, very appealing. A little bit more on the feminine side, but so is this one. And if you're gonna go with the Baccarat Rouge 540 alternative, just about all of them do lean a little bit feminine. That being said, Baccarat Rouge 540 also leans a little bit feminine and that stuff smells amazing and I don't hesitate whatsoever to wear it. The thing with this one is in the dry down, for me, it's just very bland. The amber is just kind of flat and it doesn't really do a lot for me. Now, even though it doesn't work for me, maybe I'm wrong. Lots of people out there seem to really love this one. If you look up reviews of it on, again, Fragrantica or anywhere else, People seem to like it a lot. The price is right on it. And in general, this line of fragrances, the Banana Republic Icon line, is really solid. So maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I am. I think it's kind of meh, but it's worth uh, having on your radar, if nothing else. And between these two fragrances, as far as being closest to actual Baccarat Rouge 540, it would be this one, in my opinion. Up next, just an enormously obvious one. Yes, this one is a straight up clone, whereas the other ones are either 
a little bit inspired by another fragrance or fragrances that smell similar to something else just because of the makeup of the scent. That's not what's going on here. This is just a straight up clone. Club de Nuit, Milestone from our moth. This one's got sea notes, red fruits, white woods, and ambroxan as some of the notes in the fragrance. This is a clone of Creed's Millicene Imperial. And actually, it's a really good clone. There's also Club de Nuit Siage, which is Silver Mountain Water, again, from Creed. Then there's Club de Nuit Intense Man, which is Aventus from Creed. And then there's Club de Nuit Urban Man, which is complete gutter trash. That fragrance sucks. And that one is kind of a clone of Mr. Burberry Eau de Parfum mixed with Eau de Toilette, kind of. It's terrible, don't buy it. And while this one is a very, very solid clone of Millicene Imperial, it's gonna get you really close to the real thing, our moth is very hit or miss. They have some terrible, horrible, terrible clones that are just abominations, just truly awful. And then they have some other clones that are actually really good. And this is one of the good ones. I tell you this because don't think that everything our moth is great. They are very hit or miss. And in my experience, maybe 60% or more are misses and are just terrible. I mean, some of the worst fragrances I've ever smelled in my entire life are our moth fragrances. But when they do really well, they hit it right out of the park. You just never know whether it's gonna be any good or not. That's the issue. So this one is gonna give you a really, really nice kind of salted watermelon vibe, sea salty sort of feeling as well as it dries down. It's fresh, it's refined, it's a little bit mature, but a younger guy can wear it as well. Absolutely perfect for spring or summertime. Now, if you ask me, I'd go with the original Millicene Imperial, all things being equal, but they're not. The price is very much unequal. And so if you're looking for an inexpensive alternative to Millicene Imperial, this should be your first stop right here. Okay, this next one is not at all, not at all, a clone of another fragrance. It's more so this one smells similar to a much more expensive fragrance that came out afterward. It's Mugler Amen, and this smells similar to Intoxicated from By Killian. This one's a classic, so I'm gonna go ahead and just spray it right now, just so I can smell it. I love it. Caramel Coffee Patchouli Vanilla, some of the notes in the fragrance. And this one has an opening that some people uh, find divisive, can be a little bit strong. And when it first came out, people would say it, it smelled a little bit like uh, tar, actually, the opening. I, I don't at all think that it's, I don't at all think that it's that harsh, but some people are a little iffy on the opening. It's a very strong fragrance, the caramel, the coffee, the patchouli really coming through as this dries down, and frankly, in the opening as well, it comes through. Fantastic scent. And intoxicated essentially is like a little more refined, more expensive version of Amen. If you have a big collection of fragrances, I feel like you have to own this one. I feel like it's a must have. This thing right here is just chef's kiss. And it is undeniable the similarity that has to intoxicated. So if you want a more affordable version of intoxicated, scoop up Amen. Or, you know, just if you're collecting in general, we'll scoop up Amen. Or if you like important fragrances, yeah, we'll scoop up Amen. If you like really powerful fragrances for fall and winter, scoop up Amen. You get it, you get it, moving on. Next up, Varvados Artisan Blue. This one right here smells similar to Mandarino Diamalfi from Tom Ford. This one's got basil, bergamot, pine, and geranium. That's some of the notes in the fragrance. And really, you look at the coloration there. Pretty similar, isn't it, to Mandarino di Malfi. So this one is obviously gonna give you an aquatic sort of feel, but with very much an herbal backbone. So you get this green herbal feel mixed in with that uh, aquatic nature. So is it clean? Yeah, absolutely. It's just it has very much a green edge to it, which I like a lot. You've got some bergamot in the opening, so you get a little bit of that fresh citrus right away, but it mixes with that green herbal facet as soon as you spray it on. And then once you hit the dry down, you've got pine in there. 
giving you, yes, woodiness, but more of that, that sort of green nuance that this whole fragrance is built around. Artisan blue, yeah, blue green, kind of. This next one, you're gonna have to use your imagination a little bit. This one, I would say, out of all of them, other than maybe dark cherry and amber, is not quite a one-to-one -one with the fragrance I'm gonna compare it to, but it's gonna get you a similar vibe, similar style. It's Bulgari Aqua, and this one, a bit similar to Tom Ford's Oud Mineral, which is now discontinued. This one has seaweed, cedar, mandarin, and additional woody notes. Where this really differs from Tom Ford Oud Mineral is there's, there's no Oud in here at all. It's missing a little bit of the punch of the Tom Ford. It's not at all as refined as the Tom Ford, but it is gonna give you a similar salty, briny, seaweedy, aquatic kind of feeling. So it's in familiar territory with the Tom Ford. If you spray them on side by side, which I have, they are noticeably different right away. But at the same time, you can pick up similarities. And this is gonna put you in a familiar place, uh, familiar vibe anyway, with the Tom Ford. In the Aqua line, Aqua Amara is the one that pretty much everybody knows. The original seems to get overlooked nowadays, but for the price, this one is very nice. The quality is quite high. You do have to like, again, that sort of seaweedy, briny kind of aquatic fragrance in order to appreciate this one. This is not your aqua de jo kind of aquatic, you know, your super fresh, super clean white floral aquatic. This one's got a little edge to it. It's got a little wang to it. So that fragrance right there is gonna wrap up this list of five, technically six cheap fragrances, assuming you buy them from discounters, that smell like more expensive ones. So don't be that guy that goes into a store and you see a man at full retail and you go, wait a second, <laughs> hold on. He said cheap, that's not cheap. All right, guys, it's going to do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.